Hello and welcome to Deep Blue Sea, the podcast. I am Mark, just Peachy Hoffmeyer. And I am Jay Cluett. I forgot once again. I, I, Jay Argonautica Cluett. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and we go with technical clue it. Uh, yeah, that would have worked too. But and today we are not talking about Deep Blue Sea. Uh, we are we are doing a palate cleanse. We have finished talking about Deep Blue Sea two. We have not yet begun talking about Deep Blue Sea three. Today we're talking about Deep Rising, a film that has come up several times on the show, which I had never seen before uh, last week. And Mark is a fan of, so we figured, hey, let's do a one off. Let's talk about Deep Rising. I mean, uh, the name works. It was released yeah. a year beforehand. It's on a. It, I mean, there's a. They're on a boat called the Argonautica, Deep Blue Sea, Aquatica. The yeah. gigantic monster herds people different places. The shark herds. The sharks in Deep Blue Sea herd people. So, yeah, I mean, it's basically it's a so very awesome. smart so monster herding likable characters around. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, Buck, I've got a question for you. Yeah. Have you ever just stared at a beach ball? Just kind of picked up a beach ball and just, like, stared at it in confusion? Like, yes. Uh, good. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I haven't. But when Jai uh, Hounzu just picks up each ball at one point in in deep pressing, it just kind of stares at it, and that's stuck money, money, with money. me. <laughs> oh, I love that scene. <laughs> Vivo. Oh, he gets an axe to the head. He does. That's that's like amongst the most unexpected deaths I've ever seen in a film. I thought something's gonna happen. He's gonna open the vault and be disappointed for what's inside. I didn't expect a, an axe to come out and just end him. And to kill a cheeky Jaiman Hunsu. You don't you never see Jaiman Hunsu being very cheeky. And this one's like money, 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 money. <laughs> He's having fun. The, the whole the whole crew of, of mercenaries are all having a great time until they start dying in this film. Like when they first fire off their guns, they're like, Oh, this these are awesome. It's a cool oh, fire yeah. guns. They're having such a good time. The director Steven Summers in the commentary, he said, Yeah, they're just a, a bunch of lunkheads. And I love that about them too. But I, I don't know if you noticed this so in Deep Rising I love it when they actually get onto the Argonautica and they all know all the floors and they keep repeating it. So floor six, lobby, uh, casino, floor three. Like they know exactly the layout of where they're going. And I found that to be really refreshing for a team of mercs or kind of lunkheads. They memorized the entire layout of the place. And they were quite, I, I don't know, I liked it. I thought that was pretty cool. It, yeah. was, it was neat. It's, it's, you know, it's like when... In Ocean's Eleven, they're running through the the heist plan. It's like, at, at minute 14, I'm doing this. At minute 17, I'm doing this. So where are you going to be? I'm going to be on the casino, level three. I'm on the vault, level six. I'm on the bridge, top level. Uh, oh, it's so, But it's little touches like that. And it, it's little things like this that bum me out that Deep Rising just tanked at the box office. Much like the tank that they had in Vancouver that burst. That cost them over a million dollars which ended up several million dollars, which cost them more money than would they had they just shot at the Paramount lot in Los Angeles. Yeah. But the studio wanted to save money, so they shipped them to Vancouver, the tank burst, and they spent more money. Yeah, because this, this lost, uh, lost money. Like, we were talking about before the show, I'd never heard of this film before I came up on, oh. on the show. This is just... But I freaking loved it. This, I, <laughs> I, I somehow had nostalgia for something I'd never seen before. I watched this and just... I, I somehow felt like I enjoyed it as a child, despite never having... <laughs> I, I think I would have been 11 when this came out. If I'd seen this when I was like 12, 13, it would have been my favourite film. I, I loved everything that happened in it. All the characters, all the kind of the gory death, the effects on the monster. It's all like the, the half-eaten Billy that drops out of the monster yeah. at one point. It's, it's oh. fantastic. <laughs> For 98, it looks incredible. And you can see early The Mummy in there, too. Oh, yeah. early special effects that look like that. And I think... One reason why it might have disappeared is, it, first of all, it got released under Hollywood Pictures, under Disney. It didn't even get a touchstone release. Oh. It was part of the the Hollywood Pictures, which is kind of uh, the lesser tier. Of, and so if something was released on Hollywood, you're kind of like, oh, man, it's a Hollywood picture release because Disney didn't want it. And then it also opened up in January of 98. And so it had Titanic at number one, steamrolling everything. Yeah. I mean, it, it was destroying everything. But that also had... Great Expectations, Goodwill Hunting, As Good As It Gets, Wag the Dog, Fallen, Tomorrow Never Dies, Amistad. Like, it just had all these, it had a lot of competition against it. And then it also, I don't know how much you researched into this, but they were going to shoot it really, they were they were going to, and I'm, I apologize if I'm being reductive, but I just love this about the movie. They were going to go in super early in like 96, 95, 
shoot this movie. It was going to be called Tentacle with Harrison Ford. He turned it down. They cut the budget down to $45 million, sent it to Vancouver, cast Treat Williams, who was magic in this movie. Just pure magic. Jeez Louise. I love his dialogue in this. It's beautiful. They go out there. They we're going to shoot it. They went to Vancouver. The tank burst. So then they lost a ton of time on that because then they had to rebuild the tank. There's mil- like a millions of dollars in damage. And then they had the in-house visual effects crew do it. But they, they were like, yeah, we're, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. But then they ended up being delayed for a year on visual effects with the CGI. So ILM had to come in and do the finishing touches on a lot of the monsters. Some of them got ignored, but other other parts looked beautiful. But then when it came out, you already had Titanic, Two of by Sea, Anaconda, Mimic. Like you had all these monster moves. So it, it was going to come out before Titanic. It was going to come out before Anaconda. It was going to come out before all these big old creature features, all these uh, cruise ship movies, Speed 2, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and then when it comes out, it's like, okay, Ghost Ship. Had a, I, I mean, there was um, Virus. So this movie comes out, and it's just part of, like, it's another cruise ship horror picture with monsters. And everyone, it got dumped in January, and it just vanished. And Ebert hated it. Ebert is like my favorite movie critic, Jay. And I'm so sorry, because I know you want to talk about this movie. But he dunked on it so hard. I'm happy, I'm happy to learn about it as well, Mark. I've done, I did very little research other than watch it twice. So. People people just, like, this movie is funny. And, I mean, Kevin J. O'Connor in this movie. Benny! Some Benny's lines. in this book. Benny. His lines in this movie as uh, Joey uh, Pantucci or Tooch, he is hilarious in this movie. You have Wes Studi. Famke Johnson, I think, is the M- uh, unheralded MVP. I mean, her record, she's wanted for attempted murder, robbery, theft. Uh, what, el- what else? Uh, I wrote them all down here. She's wanted for a lot of stuff. Yeah, the last thing was attempted murder on her on her ex-boyfriend. Like, but yeah, even like in, in the Mercs, you've got mentioned German Hounsey, you've got Cliff Curtis, Jason Fleming, Clifton Powell. It's, it's a real like rogues gallery of like late 90s character actors. I was overjoyed to see all of them. Like, I, I love Jason Fleming. I watch him in anything. And uh, he, he's, he's great. They're all great. They, they, they all just have like enough, enough character, enough, uh, uh, personality to make them memorable and you know, to know who to follow through this. <laughs> like the, the Aussie who just keeps on throwing up. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that's like, that's not even a country. I, yeah, I even like, I, I love the relationship between Joey Pantucci and Lila. Like, there's a scene, so she dies. And later on, when Tooch is doing some welding, he's crying. He There's is. a crying scene, and he has yeah. sleeves. So it's yeah. But I, but you know, when, when I, we I talked, to, uh, I think it was when we talked to, to, to Kevin. Uh, he said that if you welding in water films, they tend to die. And Layla is doing some welding, and she's she's the first to die of the of our wow. of our crew here. So yeah, yeah. Never weld, never, never weld, weld in a horror movie. No, I don't know how you know you're in a horror movie. <laughs> just just don't weld. But, just don't weld in general. Just I, just I, I, to be I, safe. And, and, and made, I was worried, Jay, because you sent me a message and you said, I'm about to watch Deep Rising. I'm like, yeah. And then I never heard back. From <laughs> and, and sometimes, typically, if you loved it, you would have been like, Mark, holy crap. Ah. But then I heard nothing. So I was like, uh-oh. Did I mean, it's, like... it's been a busy week. Uh, yeah. It has, it has some things going on this week. But so I apologize for not replying. But yeah. I, no, no, no. Also, I, I did kind I of think nervous. we're going to sort this in a few days time. I want to just come and do it. I love this film. Let's talk about this film. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save it for her. <laughs> Treat Williams gets it. I mean, my, I think, okay. My, one of my favorite moments in this film, it's, it's Finnegan and it's Tooch and they're running into an elevator and they come across Trillian St. James played by Fomke Johnson, who Claire Farloni was in this movie for a week. And then they said that they had uh, creative differences no. So they sent her away and they brought in uh, Fonke Johnson. But when she smacks Tooch in the face with her flat and give, breaks his nose, and then they're in the elevator and it opens up and they get a bunch of guns pointed at him. So you have Tooch and you have Finnegan dropping their guns and then she drops her shoe. It's a shoe. Yeah. It's hilarious. Like that's <laughs> funny. That that's a that's an old B movie romp. It's funny. That's a funny moment, yeah. and I don't know why people hated that. I I don't know. I, I can't explain it. But yeah, I, I I wasn't on board with just how much abuse uh, uh, Benny has of Tooch. Like I just <laughs> he's just he's Benny throughout my entire notes because it's Kevin Joe Connor. It's Benny from the money. That's just yeah. what, that's what he'll be forever. He's Benny. So I, I just wasn't on board with how much abuse he received from literally everyone. 
that he meets. Like, just as soon as Famke Janssen meets him, she just she breaks his nose and she'll break the, break the rest of his face. Not that anyone will notice. That's the first time she's met this guy, and <laughs> that he he's snooping around on the ship when he finds the the warheads that the mercenaries have got on, and they they all beat the living hell out of him. They yeah. lay into it. Like, they practically kill him. Mm-hmm. And he gets shot by Wes Tooney later in the film. Um, oh, we need to feed them. How are we going to slow them down? Pop. It's, but, okay, we'll, we'll get into it. But Wes Tooney's death uh, is my Beautiful. favorite one because it's so brutal, but he so deserves it for, for like, shoot. He, he, he shot uh, shot Tooch to slow him down to feed one of the, one of the monsters. Didn't work. He, uh, he got caught instead. And then... Uh, Tooch gives him the gun to finish himself off before he gets eaten by a monster. And instead he fires it at Tooch. <laughs> and then he goes, oh, I missed him. I'll shoot myself. No bullets left. And he gets a oh. horrific, hours long, gets drunk alive instead. Uh, oh, so so glad that he got his just desserts. I mean, that's an epic, all, I, I'm going to say it, that's an all-timer death right yeah, there. I love it. That That's it, a, 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 a Dr. Jim Whitlock level death, I think, of how kind of protracted it is. It's just so funny. I love when he... So he shoots at Pantucci or Benny. I, this is random, but we were watching at the movie. Watching the movie, I paused it, and I looked at my wife, and I was like, Hey, O'Connell, I got all the horses. <laughs> and then I went, Hey, Benny, you're on the wrong side of the river. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had to yell that, and then I just pressed play, because I love Benny so much. It's great. But and then, but So Hanover shoots at him, and I, I just love... Uh, Tooch goes, you a hole. <laughs> <laughs> and when, oh, when Trevor Goddard, who plays T Ray, is like, I don't like you. He's like, you don't even he just know met me. me. <laughs> yeah, he just met me. <laughs> and he's hurt by it. Everyone, hate, like, but everyone hates him so much that he's he's so such a beaten down personality. Like he he knows he's expendable, mm-hmm. and but he survives. I'm so glad he he survives. And he gets a crying moment over. I, I, he gets a cry over Layla. I wish she would. She was cool. I wish she would have lived. Yeah. But she, he gets a cry, and he sticks up for her on the boat. Remember when they're kind of talking to her? When I, the one Kurt, Cliff Curtis, he's just he just wants to hook up with a woman all over the he, world. He's not had a Korean yet, as he says. Yeah, oh gosh. <laughs> Again, a very deserved death. <laughs> and I love though that Benny, like he, Benny's going to fight him, and then one of the Mercs goes, "What are we in high school? Let's knock this off." And that was refreshing. Like they're a bunch of bros, but they never, they never really go after Trillian. They never go after Lila. They're just kind of brats to them, except for Curtis. So yeah, it's... yeah. I feel like if uh, if Curtis had had met Trillian, then there would have been a, a, a conversation at least. And I'm kind of glad <laughs> yeah. he didn't get to meet. Uh, like, I, I'm I, just, I, yeah, yeah. That, don't you just get tired of Mercs? Just oh, oh hey, like they really avoided that. And I'm not applauding a movie for doing the right thing. But it's just refreshing not to have that in yes. this because they just get right to business. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, and Finnegan's just playing poker. He has Layla outside working. He's like, I'm busy here. <laughs> so you say like you, you've commended Treat Williams. He's actually, uh, if I had to find some problems with the film, he might be on the list of problems. This this oh, is wow. the first Treat Williams film I've seen. I've never. I, I, apparently he's Aaron's dad in 127 hours. I don't remember him in that, but fine. He's in the Phantom with Billy Zane. Yeah, I, I I've been down his CV. I've seen nothing else he's in. I have not seen. Oh, you got to see the Phantom. It's he's on my list. That. I'll get there. Cool. That's, uh, I'm sure he is. Uh, but it's I I didn't know that Harrison Ford was, was originally wanted for this role because it's very clear. I think somebody probably told Treat Williams that because he is very much being Han Solo on the water. With his, with his just whole, his quips, his demeanor, his entire attitude is just trying to be a, a, a Han Solo parody. He's basically Lone Star from Spaceballs, is how I kind of <laughs> came across this. And the whole Jeez way, Louise. yeah, the whole way through the film, I was like, he reminds me of someone. That face, I couldn't picture it. And then towards the end, I was like, oh my god, you know, in Shrek Two, when Shrek turns into a human, he turns into Treat Williams in this film. I, it, they have identical faces. I couldn't. And that's just when I watched it again. All I can see is the human version of Shrek from Shrek Two. Is Street Oh Williams. man, <laughs> I love. <laughs> I know he gets kind of bagged on, right? Treat because, but I think I like him in this movie because it's just so 